Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. As we all probably know, machine learning systems have thrived in the era of big data. But to use that data safely and effectively, we have to take privacy into account when developing machine learning systems. There have been a lot of attempts at this, from federated learning to differential privacy, but it turns out that a lot of these systems have a fatal flaw and that blockchain technology might help us solve it. If you're new here, subscribe to keep learning about AI and emerging tech. And if you were looking for a reason to follow me on Instagram, I actually found out about this topic because of a conversation that I had with these people after posting on my IG story about being interested in learning more about Ethereum. So thanks to them for making me aware of this and for answering a bunch of my questions. As I mentioned earlier in this video, machine learning algorithms thrive on having access to large data sets. So it's not a huge surprise that machine learning systems have become widespread over the last 10 to 15 years in the era of big data. However, when we talk about big data, we often discuss it as if all of that data were in one pool in one location. And while that would certainly be the most convenient option when it came to training a machine learning model, in reality, that's not really the case. Having all of our data in one place isn't necessarily great for our individual privacy. In fact, when it comes to certain types of data, things like protected health information, it may be illegal to share that data outside of certain frameworks. But on top of that, the data often isn't generated in the same place. It might be generated on our individual devices or in different geographic regions, and having to send all of that data to one centralized location would be time-consuming, expensive, and very inefficient. And for this reason, distributed machine learning systems or machine learning frameworks that train on multiple different data sources have been a popular area of research for some time. I'll include a link to the other videos that I've done on the topic of distributed machine learning, federated learning, and differential privacy in the cards as well as in the description, but in short, distributed machine learning allows us to train machine learning models individually on separate data sources and then combine the gradients or the weights of those models in a global centralized model that is used by everyone. This allows us to train new models without having any of that data or leave the original device, but it also introduces a privacy problem. Namely, distributed machine learning systems rely on a centralized server or hub that stores the model and coordinates the training process. And if that system were to fail or be attacked, everyone would be kind of screwed. And if that concern sounds familiar, it's probably because one of the main touted perks of blockchain technology is that there is no central arbiter of the entire system. In other words, there's no one fault point that can bring everything else down. Brilliant has a great course on the math behind blockchain systems if you'd like to get a really in-depth understanding of how these work, but for the purposes of this video, a blockchain is a list of records or blocks that are linked together using something called a cryptographic hash. Each block contains the hash value of the information stored in the block before it, and these blocks are distributed across multiple computers and users in a network so that everyone has access to the current state of the blockchain at all times. Importantly, if someone alters a block, it changes the hash value associated with it and therefore changes the hash value associated with every block that comes after it. This means that that blockchain no longer agrees with every other device that's on the network. And so it's clearly apparent that something has been tampered with. And when it comes to machine learning, we can actually use this system to train models in a decentralized but still secure way. For example, Learning Chain is a blockchain-based machine learning framework that allows us to perform distributed machine learning without that central arbiter. In this framework, a blockchain is initialized with several distributed devices, including our data source, the computing nodes that will update the model, and any other systems or users that are involved in the development of the model. From here, we can essentially perform an encrypted version of federated learning, where the computers hosting the data will take the current global version of the model, train it on that local data, and encrypt the resulting weights of that model, sending them back out to all of the compute nodes in our system. The computing nodes then compete to add the next block to the blockchain by solving a complicated math puzzle, and the winning node collects all the gradients to update that global model, which is stored in the next block along with all the training information when it is appended to the chain. In this framework, all of the identities of the data sources are anonymized and the weights of the models are encrypted using differential privacy, so both the identities of the users and their data are private. Additionally, before that next block is added to the chain by the computing node, that node will actually go through and make sure that the encrypted identities of the data sources as well as the gradients match up with the historical record on the blockchain, and if they don't, they won't be included in the update. 
Interestingly though, this isn't the only place where blockchain systems could be useful in the machine learning pipeline. When it comes to data privacy, blockchain can be used to facilitate secure data sharing, allowing people to regain ownership over their own data and make data actually more accessible to researchers. So for example, a patient would be able to securely share their medical records with a new doctor or share anonymized versions of their medical records with researchers who are interested in investigating a particular condition they might have. In fact, you could actually use blockchain systems to sell your data using something called Called a smart contract. Smart contracts are programs stored on a blockchain, specifically Ethereum, that only execute when specific preconditions are met and which store and maintain a record of those conditions and the results of the program in the blockchain itself. And you can use smart contracts to do anything from pay someone when a product is sold to issuing a parking ticket to analyzing a patient's encrypted health data using machine learning when that patient gives permission for that data to be analyzed. In fact, as a quick aside, Jeremy, one of the guys that I mentioned that I talked to on Instagram, works in NFT acquisitions for crypto.com, and he pointed me towards some interesting work on developing smart contracts that allow people to be paid royalties when their work is used or transfer parts or entire ownership of that work to other people, which has been one of the main criticisms of things like NFTs. So for example, a musician might use a smart contract to automatically receive a royalty payment when someone who has purchased some portion of the rights to that song plays it on the radio. But getting back to the point, in short, blockchain technology could actually be the missing piece that fills in some of the gaps in current privacy-preserving machine learning frameworks. And of course, this doesn't come without caveats. Blockchain systems are not perfect in a lot of ways, including their environmental impacts, and they're still subject to security failures. In fact, several cryptocurrencies were in the news over the last few months for security breaches. Additionally, the legal status of things like smart contracts is still a little bit up in the air, so it'll be interesting to see how those end up fitting into our existing legal framework. Interestingly though, machine learning actually might help solve some of these problems. It's been proposed as a tool to make blockchain mining more energy efficient, as well as to create intelligent smart contracts that better suit the needs of users. And of course, this all sounds really cool in theory, but how do we actually implement these systems in real life? I have no idea. In fact, that's actually why I started taking a course on cryptocurrencies on Brilliant, a website and app that has courses on everything from the basics of math, science, and computer science to quantum computing, cryptocurrencies, and machine learning. Their courses are laid out like a story, broken down to pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. Right now, I'm learning about cryptographic hash functions, which are used to determine whether or not someone has tampered with a blockchain. The best part is there's no tests and no grades, so you can just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get going. If you like Stalker made a mistake, you can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. So if using blockchain to develop privacy-preserving machine learning systems sounds interesting to you, or if there's another course that caught your eye, click on the link in the description down below or sign up for free at brilliant.org slash Jordan. In fact, the first 200 people to go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Clicking on that link directly supports my channel, so thanks in advance. Otherwise, if you like this video, let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out my playlist on privacy reserving machine learning if you want to learn more about the details of things like distributed machine learning. Otherwise, you can follow my PhD life on the vlog channel, my Twitter, and my Instagram, and I will see y'all on Monday. Bye.